Today we're going to be taking a look at the S2000 portable power station from All Powers and performing a few different tests to see how it holds up to the manufacturer's stated specs and also running some charging tests with a few different All Power solar panels and I'll leave you with my final thoughts and show you how it stacks up to some of the other power stations and solar panels that I've tested in the past to help you decide whether or not this is something that you should actually buy. But overall I was impressed by the amount of continuous watts it could deliver and it did incredibly well in my fridge runtime test and if you want to jump to a particular section of the video you can reference the timestamps but before we get started be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here and if you want to pick up the power station and support my channel you can use the links down in the description below all right so this is the s2000 and this is a ternary lithium battery based power station which has a very very high energy density high charge and discharge efficiency and it's rated for over 2500 charge cycles the downside to this type of battery is that their performance can suffer in high temperatures and they are more expensive compared to lithium iron phosphate batteries it has a huge led display and this is going to give you the remaining battery life as a percentage the input and output speeds in watts an estimation of the remaining runtime as well as basic indicators letting you know whether or not the USB ports and the outlets are live and beneath the display we've got a few different buttons to turn on the power and also the AC and DC outputs. On top of the S2000 we've got an array of four different 110 volt AC outlets and this is typically more than you see on most other power stations which is nice because it does make it very convenient for you to plug in a bunch of different devices simultaneously and it's rated for a continuous 2000 watts and a 4000 watt surge and we will be testing out the continuous output a little later in this video. To the left of the display we've got our USB output section which includes four high speed type A's as well as a pair of 100 watt PD USB C ports which are going to give you lightning fast device charging speeds so there is a very good quantity of ports here which is really nice if you have usb heavy power needs and there's also a car style output as well there's an xt60 solar input with a max input of 500 watts and a little later on in the video we'll be testing it out with two of our sp033 200 watt solar panels and also their sp037 400 watt panel finally on the back of the device there's an ac input and with the included ac charger you should get speeds of around 400 watts and a four hour charge time and we'll also be testing this out in this video as well now we're going to jump into some testing to see if the s2000 holds up to some of the most important tasks and first we'll see if it can continuously run at the 200 watt max output it claims and this matters because we want to know whether or not it can handle the more higher watt power hungry devices so to test this we're going to plug in a few different devices and try to push this power station to its limits and since this device does have high output ratings we're going to jump right in with some high watt devices including this hot air gun and a small hair dryer which together combined for right around 1940 watts which was very close to the 2000 watts stated and if you just take a look inside this hot air gun you can see how hot these coils are getting I did try cranking it up further and it did conk out after I turned the small hair dryer up to its max output. Now we're going to test the true watt hour capacity of this power station and see how close it comes to the 1500 watt hour stated. And this will give you an indication of how long you'll be able to run your devices when you look up their watts. So in order to test this out, we've got a wall outlet style power meter, which will display the kilowatt hours and will be running a few box fans and a lamp, which combine for a total of about 117 watts, which will cause the internal fan to come on. On. so it will be a good test of how efficient this device really is and we're going to take a few hours to discharge the battery most of the night went by and at the end it's going to give us a measurement of the total watt hours and the meter is reading 983 watt hours which is about 66 percent of the stated capacity which was decent but it's not the best that i've seen and i probably should have used higher watt devices to perform this test but good news is is that the true cost per usable watt hour is going to be around 71 cents which is actually quite affordable compared to many any of the other power stations that I've tested in the past. One thing I discovered is that the AC outputs get disabled with around 5% of the remaining battery life and they won't work again until you charge the power station back up. But the USB ports do work still, so you can use those, but there is still some power left over which is impacting the AC efficiency score by a few percent. Now that we're down to a 5% charge, we're gonna plug in the power station to a wall outlet and see how long it takes to charge. And the charging cable itself is quite small and there's no power adapter brick like you see 
see with most power stations, which does make it less cumbersome and more convenient to carry than most other charging setups. On the back of the power station, there's an input, which is what we'll be using for this test. And you can see on the display that the charging speed is reasonably quick at around 382 watts, which is just shy of the 400 watt AC input charging speeds claimed. And I plugged it in at about 9.27 a.m. and it was fully charged by 11.49 a.m. So the total charge time was only two hours and 22 minutes. This is actually pretty impressive charging speed considering the capacity of the power station, which is quite high. Another test I really like to run on my power stations is the fridge runtime test. And this might be important for you if you're worried about your food spoiling during a power outage. And this test is pretty straightforward. And what we're gonna do here is plug the fridge into the power station and see how long it can run for. I plugged it in in the morning and we did use it normally throughout the day and must have opened it and closed it about a dozen times. And it was able to keep the fridge running for a total of 17 hours and 20 minutes, which is the best performance from any power station that I've tested. The final test we're gonna do is to see if this device has a UPS mode and whether or not it can be used as a backup battery for electronics. And right now the power station is plugged into the extension cord. And then we've got a surge protector plugged into the power station with a bunch of different stuff plugged in, including my desktop PC and monitor. And so now we'll unplug the charging cable from the power station. And as you can see, it was able to transition seamlessly from charging to battery powered output exclusively without any disruption to the devices plugged in so it does work reasonably well as a backup battery for basic electronic devices now we're going to test out a few different solar panels and see what kind of speeds we can get charging up the s2000 first of all we'll test out two of the sp033 200 watt panels connected in parallel which should combine for a total of approximately 400 watts and to make this possible i picked up a few adapters and an mc4 extension cable online they are pet panels but they are relatively waterproof Proof and the setup was pretty straightforward and these panels are relatively easy to configure and once I got everything connected and plugged into the power station I was able to get a charging speed of around 310 watts at about 11 a.m. which is approximately 78% of what it claimed which is decent and this brings the cost per tested watt to around $1.48, which is one of the best that I've tested so far. And I've tested out a bunch of different solar panels on this channel and compiled all of my testing results into this database. And if you wanna check that out, there will be a link down in the description below. All Powers also asked me to test out their massive 400 watt panel they sent me a few months back. And this one is a bit bulkier and a bit trickier to set up. But once I got it all set up and plugged in, I was able to get charging speeds of around 390 watts, which is actually a lot better than the 351 watts we registered the last time that we tested this panel, which does make this panel not only one of the most efficient panels that I've ever tested, but also the most affordable panel from a cost per watt perspective, which is pretty impressive. So so this would definitely be a panel I would highly recommend to anybody looking for something in the 400 watt range. Now I'll take a few minutes to give you my final thoughts on the S2000 which currently sells for $699 by itself on the Outpowers website or $1059 if you want to pick it up together with two of the 200 watt solar panels or $1099 if you want to pick it up with the 400 watt panel. A few months ago I put together this database of power stations that I've tested to help better compare and put each power station's strengths and weaknesses into perspective to hopefully give you a better sense of the true value that they offer based on the data that I've collected from tests like the ones that you saw earlier in this video. So now all of the data from this power station is included. This is the highest watt output model of all the power stations that I've tested, and we clocked it around 1940 watts, which is impressive considering some of the more expensive power stations from those like BioLite, Runhood, and Geniverse max out at around 1200 watts. So this is definitely an impressive option if you really need to be able to run lots of watts simultaneously, and it does cost less than all of those larger models. It stacks up fine in the max AC output as a percentage category, and in the tested versus claim watt hour category, it did do somewhat below average at around 66%, so it doesn't deliver all that well in this department, but it did actually have a decent cost per watt hour score at around 71 cents per watt hour, which is also a lot better than BioLite, Runhood, and Geniverse. Charging speeds were also exceptionally fast compared to the larger power stations as well. Overall, I do think this is a great power station for the price, and it did do really well in the fridge runtime test too, but let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section, and if you have any interest in learning more and supporting the channel, please consider using the links down in the description below, and I'll also leave a link to the power station database down there as well.